Hello and welcome to the second week of season 22, Season of the Witch, starting on August 29th, 2023. So for week two, let's get going with our legacy rotation, starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a medium curse level, which means Petrovenge can be found in the Davilian Mist and has the Oracle Engine mission for the next week. The Blind World features Hive enemies and the Plague, Kregar. The Ascendant Challenge this week will be the Shattered Ruins, which can be located over in the Spine of Keris on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the Moon, the weekly story mission is a Mysterious Disturbance. The Trove Guardian is located in the Anchor of Light, while the Wandering Nightmare is the Nightmare of Zortal in Sorrow's Harbour. And the Nightmare Hunt this week will be Tanix, Isolation, Zydron, Servitude, and Ghoul, Rage. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Phylax the Warrior will be the Empire Hunt, Asterion's Abyss will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Change will be Agility. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, we have the Loot Rotation for Dears of Eternity, which will be on week 3's rotation, with the Scatterhorn armor set, and the Lightkin armor set being available. The weapons available this week are the Kinetic Rapid Fire Frame Auto Rifle Chroma Rush, the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Grenade Launcher Ignition Code, the Void Rapid Fire Frame Pulse Rifle Grid Skipper, the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Sidearm Farewell, the Solar Pinpoint Slug Frame Shotgun Sonja's Tail, the Void Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun Shattered Cipher, the Arc Precision Frame Fusion Rifle Main Ingredient, the Kinetic Adaptive Frame Sniper Rifle Long Shadow, the Arc Omelon Adaptive Frame Sidearm Last Dance, the Kinetic Aggressive Frame Shotgun Toil and Trouble, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Shotgun Wishbringer, and the Void Adaptive Frame Pulse Rifle Last Edition. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen weekly story mission is The Ghosts, where the modifiers are Fire Pit and Raider Shields, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Also this week you will have Altar of Reflections Choice and Altar of Reflections Insight. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a featured Throne World weapon, Veritas Armor and a weapon pattern as its rewards. For the Lightful expansion, the weekly mission is Downfall, with Extra Shields, Lock Loadouts and Extra Champions. Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, Solar Threat, Scorched Earth, Kinetic Overcharge, Void and Solar Surges, with an Overcharge Weapon, and Galvanized on Hero Difficulty only. The Partition Mission will be Ordnance, Contest Mode Enabled, with Overload and Unstoppable Champions, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Shields, Air Superiority Modifier, with Solar and Strand Surges. And the Vex Incursion this week will be Amsha Park. In addition, the weekly Lightful Reset also refreshes the Pinnacle Drop for the Node Override Avalon Exotic Mission on the EDZ. For the Season of the Deep, all three fishing ponds are now exotic all week. Raids and Dungeons The Reprise Quotas End Raid goes live this Friday, September 1st at 10am PDT and is free to all players. You will need a fire team of 6 and be at the power level of 1790 to enter the raid. Contest mode will be enabled for 48 hours, which caps your power level at each encounter to make enemies more of a challenge. So grab your fire team and descend into the dark below. The Root of Nightmares raid chance this week should be the third encounter, Macrocosm, called Cosmic Equilibrium. Players must swap all of the dark planets to the left side of the room and all of the light worlds to the right, with the Briar's Contempt Adept Linear Fusion Rifle being the Master Challenge reward. The King's Hall Challenge this week is the fifth encounter, Oryx, called Hands Off. Players must not kill the same ogre or light eater knight throughout the encounter. The Vow the Disciple challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Rook, called Looping Catalyst. This is where Guardians must not lose the leeching force before the damage phase. The Vault of Glass challenge this week is the first encounter, Confluxes, called Wait for it, where every yellow bar wyvern must be killed as they sacrifice themselves to the Confluxes. The Deepstone Crypt challenge this week is the second encounter, Atrax 1, called Copies of Copies where you must not send any Atrax 1 replicant debuffs into the airlock slash space. And the last wish challenge this week is the fifth encounter, Riven, called Strength of Memory, where Gondias must not shoot the same Riven Eye twice. Your pinnacle raid will be the Garden of Salvation over on the moon, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Embrace, called To the Top. This is where you must not kill the Cyclopses that spawn near the Consecrated Mine. The second encounter, Spy Defense, called A Link to the Chain. This is where all Guardians must receive the Enlightened buff at the same time. The third encounter, Consecrated Mind, called Staying Alive, where you must not kill the spawning Cyclopses in the first two rooms. And the fourth encounter, Sanctified Mind, called Zero to 100, where you must fully fill each Conflux with 30 motes within 10 seconds of initially banking the first set of motes. 
Also, with the Gun of Salvation being the featured raid, this does mean that you might be able to find a team to guide you through the final part of the Divine Fragment quest and raid puzzles to collect the exotic trace rifle Divinity. The Pinnacle Dungeon will be the Spire of the Watcher over on the Throne World. And our second exotic mission rotator of the season will be Vox Obscura, with the Dead Messenger exotic grenade launcher being the main reward. Craftable weapons available from this mission include the Solar Waveframe Grenade Launcher Explosive Personality, the Stasis Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun Recurrent Impact, the Void Precision Frame Bow Under Your Skin, the Arc Rapid Fire Frame Auto Rifle Sweet Sorrow, the Stasis Adaptive Frame Sniper Thoughtless, and the Kinetic Rapid Fire Frame Pulse Rifle Peace of Mind, with the Tusk Allegiance Armor Set. Next up, Challenges. Acolyte Ascent 2. Complete Week 2 of the Bladed Path Quest for Challenge XP. Luminary 1. Master the Light by defeating 300 combatants with Void, Arc or Solar Damage. Explore the Arcane Arts by identifying 5 minor Arcane cards at the Lectern of Divination at the Anatheum. 4. Challenge XP++++. Legend Spire. Complete Savathun Spire on Legend Difficulty for Challenge XP+. Wisps and Whispers. Draw Whisper cards from the Deck of Whispers in Savathun Spire or Altars of Summoning to earn powerful bonuses. Unlock the Deck of Whispers by identifying 5 major arcane cards at the Lectern of Divination for Challenge XP. Absolutely stunning. Stun 50 champions for Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Most Dangerous Prey. Defeat 25 Guardians in Gambit or Crucible for Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. And Bank Your Repeat. Earn points by banking moats, defeating blockers and defeating guardians in Gambit for Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Season of the Witch brings with it three new exotic armor pieces. For the Titans, we have the Pyrogale Gauntlets, which modifies Burning Maul into a single high damage slam of your hammer that creates five cyclone flames. Consecration's second slam creates a cyclone of flame. For the Hunters, we have the Mothkeeper's Wraps. Your grenade becomes a cage of loyal moths that release on impact and fly towards the nearest target or ally. If they reach a target, they detonate in a blinding explosion. If they reach an ally, the moth grants your ally a void overshield. And for the Warlocks, the Briarbinds. Your void souls have a longer duration. They also gain an escalating damage and durability as they defeat targets. You can retrieve your void souls by interacting with them, allowing them to be redeployed. These can either be acquired via the Vex Strike Force event in the Vex Incursion Zone, or Lost Sector. Hello. 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 With this being a new season, we will have a legendary Lost Sector shakeup, meaning we won't know the order of the Lost Sectors until we've had a full rotation. As a reminder, your daily Lost Sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of threats, shields, champions and exotic armour you will find inside. But if you are new to the game or using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the Lost Sector normally to have it show up on your map as the Legend Slash Master. Which you can either do solo or with a fire team, but you'll only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. Tuesday, August 29th will be exotic gauntlets. Wednesday, August 30th will be exotic chests. Thursday, August 31st will be exotic helmets. Friday, September 1st will be exotic boots. Saturday, September 2nd will be exotic gauntlets. Sunday, September 3rd will be exotic chests. And finally, Monday, September 4th will be exotic helmets. Lead the way. Our second featured nightfall of the season will see us face off against Once Forest, the exhumed tether in the highest battlegrounds moon, where you have a chance to get a pinnacle engram if you complete the nightfall with a score of 200k or more. This nightfall is free to play. You'll be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards and adept Nightfall ciphers. The higher the Nightfall difficulty the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to being common with ascendant shards in Grand Masters. You will face barrier and unstoppable champions with arc, solar and void shields. Your Nightfall modifiers are hero difficulty, maximum effective level 1765, Matchmaking is available. Enemies have extra shields. Champions foe. You will face barrier and unstoppable champions. You can either use intrinsic exotics, use a subclass debuff, or unlock anti-champion mods from the seasonal artifact. Elemental threat. 25% increase at an incoming element's damage. Empath. Enhanced radar, take increased damage from melee. Fire pit. When defeated, acolytes spawn a fireball that causes damage over time. Overcharged weapons. Weapons overcharged from the season artifact are active in this activity. Kinetic weapons do increase damage when your subclass element matches an active surge. Two elemental surges. 25% bonus to two outgoing elements damage. Overcharged weapons. 25% bonus damage to a specific weapon type. Galvanized. Combatants have more health and are more difficult to stun. Legend difficulty. 
maximum effective level 1815, includes all previous modifiers except galvanized, no matchmaking, equipment locked, you will be unable to change your equipment once the mission starts, raider shields, scorn raiders now have void shields, master difficulty, maximum effective level 1820, includes all previous modifiers except galvanized, champions mob, this difficulty adds more champion enemies, and chafe, radar is disabled. To combat champions this season you will have access to subclass counters as well as a choice of intrinsic anti-champion artifact mods, which are anti-barrier auto rifle, anti-barrier bow, unstoppable scout rifle, and unstoppable fusion. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For anti-barrier, the kinetic bow wish ender, the kinetic linear fusion rifle arbalist, the kinetic pulse rifle revision zero, the solar energy hand cannon Ariana's vow, the Solar Heavy Sword, the Lament, and the Titan Gauntlet, Second Chance, which gain a second charge of a shield throw melee, which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. And for Unstoppable, the Kinetic Fusion Rifle Bastion, the Kinetic Hand Cannon Malfeasance, the Kinetic Scout Rifle Touch of Malice, the Solar Energy Sidearm, Devil's Ruin, the Void Heavy Bow, Leviathan's Breath, and the Hunter Gauntlet's Atheris' Embrace, which have a chance to stun Unstoppable champions with their Empowered Weighted Knife. Lord Shack Springs Mayhem to the Crucible for the second week of the season. Mayhem is where two teams of six players go head to head in a clash type mode. Abilities and supers charging at an extremely faster rate than usual. Respawns are instant, and power ammo spawns are also much faster than usual. With a time limit of 10 minutes, the first team to get 125 eliminations is the winner. And Zone Control will be returning this week in the Relentless Crucible playlist. Zone Control is a 6v6 game mode which emphasizes team based gameplay in capturing zones and not kills. Zone Control forces players to collaborate more actively in capturing and defending zones. Capturing zones dramatically takes longer if only one player tries to do it themselves, with it taking 22.5 seconds to capture the point, whereas two can capture within 10 seconds. Three or more players will capture a zone in 7.5 seconds. Beyond that, capturing a zone will net the team one point per capture, and holding onto the point will reward two points every 15 seconds per zone, making it essential to lock down areas rather than float between them carelessly. The first team to 125 points wins. Plus, Crucible Labs will have the game mode Relic. Relic is a 6v6 PvP party mode where all players wreak havoc and destruction on their foes with a Relic weapon. Relics include the Aegis Shield from Vault of Glass, the Synaptic Spear from Season of the Risen, and the Scythe from Season of the Haunted. Each player charges their personal Relic energy by defeating opponents with their normal loadout. Upon reaching full charge, players can acquire the Relic from the Relic Depot. Defeating Relic Holders and using Relics to defeat opponents earns points for the team. DELIGHTFUL! And Trials of Osiris will be back at the weekend with some new loot to chase. Like the Strand Heavy Grenade Launcher, the Cataract GL3, and the returning Solar Aggressive Frame Hand Cannon, Igneous Hammer. There are also rewards for players who do make it to the Lighthouse and open the chest. These include the Hero's Wake Exotic Ghost Shell, the Valiant Memory Exotic Ship, the Survivor's Journey Exotic Sparrow, a new armor set, and the new Trial Shader, Bloodline Feud. Trials of Osiris Dominion is a 3v3 PvP high stakes game mode with a twist of a capture point. In Dominion, two teams of three go head to head in a battle for control of a capture point. Teams can either work together to capture the control point or eliminate the enemy team to win the round. Only available from Friday reset until Tuesday weekly reset, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armor. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked through a passage card a ticket purchased from Saint-14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in Trials of Osiris will grant exclusive weapons, armor, pinnacle gear, masterwork materials and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of 7 games won and no losses. 5 round wins will bag you the match for your passage card. By competing in Trials you do have a chance to pick up 2 pinnacle engrams from playing each week, one from 50 round wins and the other from winning 7 games. These do not have to be done all in one go but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. That is amazing. And that's it for the second week of Season of the Witch. Thank you for watching. Allons-y. Guardian down.